Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. <laughs> Amigo! Amigo, welcome to the northern Mexican states of America. How are you? Soon English will be outlawed because we don't want to speak English. It should be Spanish as a second language. I think all the schools in America under Obama should be turned into SSL schools, not ESL. I mean, think about the racism of English as a second language. How dare you be so culturally imperious to tell people who came to this country seeking a better life by not working that they have to learn the language. Think about that, how insulting it is to people coming here illegally. ESL, English as a second language? I mean, my first language, let's say, is Spanish. Why would I want to learn English at all if the checks come to me anyway? Why would I want to learn English if I can get medical care for free? without speaking a word of English. And why would I want to learn English if I can vote in Spanish, even though I'm not allowed to vote? No, no, no. You have it upside down. I think it should be Spanish as a second language in America. At least that's what the people on the uh, uh, border are telling me, that soon it will be uh, Spanish as a second language, and the people who live there will be told to go home. Now, of course, this is a poor parody. I realize it's primitive and it's crude. But um, I see what's going on. We have a... A rogue president who's out of control, acting like a crazed criminal. I know those are harsh words, but I have no other words for them. I don't know how to create words that are not real. If a man violates the Constitution on a regular basis, if he uh, overrides the Supreme Court and says, they let them do what they want, I don't care, I'll use the pen, whatever. If he says, we're going to bring in the illegals no matter what you do, whatever, then goes off to a golfing game. You have to say to yourself, you have something wrong here. Either he's crazy or something worse. Now, I don't think he's crazy, do you? He doesn't look like he's crazy to me. Do you, does he think he's, do you think the president is a nut? Or do you think that he knows what he's doing? I think he knows what he's doing. I don't think he could be a nut. And what's happening, though, is that the opportunists, like, uh, the opportunists are going along with him. All the opportunists will see which way the wind blows, like Glenn Beck are jumping ship and moving into the amnesty uh, area, claiming they're doing it for the children. I don't know how you can distinguish between Glenn Beck and Amnesty International, or Glenn Beck and all the people he's pretended all these years to despise. How is Glenn Beck's position different than that of La Raza or Lulak? I don't understand that you know what's going on, but he sees which way the wind is blowing, and he's decided which way to go, which is on the side of amnesty. So I think it's best to begin by telling you that I've been working on the issue of immigrants and epidemics for at least 10 years before I started in radio, which was back in, in the 80s, I told you that. And now we have a border crisis that is a health threat to the nation. Article came out today in Newsmax magazine about the real health threat. And it was written by a board-certified otolaryngologist. Laryngologist, laryngologist. In other words, a doctor who knows what he's talking about on Newsmax. And he said it's like a perfect pressure cooker. A culture medium, if you really want to think about it. A 1,700-mile track by foot, by train, or however else they're being brought in. They haven't been fed. They're dehydrated. Their immune systems have basically taken a major hit. And you have to remember that they're young children, so they don't have a lot of reserve to begin with. Frontline health professionals are seeing people with active TB. Listen to me, liberal morons living in New York City who can smile and smirk at Michael Savage. This is to all of you smart Alex, especially on the Upper East Side who think you know everything. But actually, you're the stupidest people in the United States of America because of your smugness. Frontline health professionals are seeing people with active tuberculosis who are coughing up blood, who are short of breath, who are physically in the throes of active TB and they are communicable, close quote, said the board-certified doctor. 
Listen, idiots on the Upper East Side of Manhattan who think you're better than everybody, who think that the rest of the country is just a bunch of flyover rubes. Listen to me. The day is going to come that you're going to think back on this radio show and say, that guy tried to warn us, but I laughed at him. That guy tried to tell us that we have a rogue president who's destroying the country. That guy tried to tell us that not all immigrants are the same. That guy tried to tell us that no sane nation on earth lets illegal aliens with active TB into their country. That guy tried to tell us that no sane nation on earth has no voter ID. That guy tried to tell us that there was a government not of the people, by the people, and for the people, but a government of the fill-in-the-blank because it's not of the people, by the people, and for the people. And as Abe Lincoln said, you can fool some of the people some of the time, and you can fool some of the New Yorkers all of the time, but you can't fool Michael Savage any of the time. That's right. I am the son of an immigrant, but it's unheard of what is going on in this country. The destruction is rampant. Doctor went on. He said they're putting them on commercial airliners. The so-called TSA has been ordered to stand down and allow these infected children, infected children and adults to get on planes without, without ID. So they're arriving in Georgia, Maryland, all over the country. In Maryland, there was an immigrant child who had TB. And all the parents in the schoolroom just got a letter from their school stating that all their children had been exposed to tuberculosis. Now, of course, it doesn't affect the Upper East Side of Manhattan, as you know there. The people who go to the White House who sneer at anybody who loves America and the flag. And so they're not going to get TB, as you understand. They're immune to it. They can't get it, after all. They're, they're the good liberals. Why would a tuberculosis bacterium infect a good liberal from the Upper East Side of Manhattan? They're immune. I mean, they only affect right-wing crackers. Tuberculosis can only transmit from an illegal alien child spitting up blood to some cracker somewhere in another state. It can't affect you. You're on the border of the Museum of Modern Art. How can it affect you? You're on the border of all the museums in Manhattan. You ride around in a limousine. How can this affect you? You're above it. You're above not only the law, as we well know, because you have protexia at the highest level. I mean, your husband and you bought that protection a long time ago by buying politicians. And so I'm sure that the TB will also stay away from you. You put a marking on your door, TB, stay away. You put a marking on your door that said swine flu, not here. I'm not a right winger. You put a marking on your door that said infectious tuberculosis cannot enter my door because I am a good American liberal. Yeah, that's how you think. That's called insanity. And that's why I wrote a book many years ago called Liberalism is a Mental Disorder. You, my dear, are nuts. You, my dear, on the Upper East Side of Manhattan, are nuts. Your country is melting down in front of your eyes because of this criminal administration. Let me repeat those two words in case you missed it. Criminal administration. They're violating the laws of the land. How many scandals? Well, you wouldn't know. You're on the board of the museum. Liberalism is a mental disorder by the New York Times bestseller, Michael Savage. Yep, but... <clears throat> Since you're uh, not going to be affected by any, any of this, you can certainly switch the radio channel in New York City from WABC to some drivel. So we have a health threat. TB, which was once almost wiped out in America, resurged during the AIDS epidemic. Now it's a menace again. And by the way, attention gay listeners. Attention gay listeners. If your immune systems happen to be, God forbid, compromised, by the HIV virus. You, of all people, should be most concerned about the influx of diseases that were once suppressed in this nation. See, in the past, there were treatments for tuberculosis. But now it's become so difficult to treat because of the untreatable strain of TB that even as a health care provider, like this doctor, they have to take tests every year and do questionnaires to make sure that they're not able to pass any diseases. And then, of course, lady on the Upper East Side, the smart one getting into her limo, the smart one stepping home from lunch, drunk from too many martinis or another do doobie in, the, in, the, in a limo. There's mumps, lady. Lady, there's chicken pox. Lady, there are senior citizens all around you who are at risk, and especially the people with HIV or other immune-compromising diseases, they should be speaking the most about this. 
And then, of course, there are the tropical diseases that you don't know anything about. Tropical diseases that were once wiped out <clears throat> are now being reintroduced to the United States of America from the tropics. Oh, yeah. See, that's how it, so it's called a tropical disease. So if you bring in people from that tropical area, they have Chagas's. They may have Chagas's disease. They may have other illnesses. But what do you care? I mean, it's, it's all about the lack of compassion on the part of the evil Republicans. I think Nixon did this. If only Nixon had not been president, there would be no illegals here, right? Nobody would be illegal. And so my heart, my friends, is yearning for some salvation. I see the enemy at the gate. Our borders are being overwhelmed by illegal aliens because the president invited them in. Men, women, children, families... The beacon of hope of America for millions and millions who yearn to be free is being overwhelmed by a tsunami of humans. I'm not going to get angered by the debate over who to blame. I'm just sick over it. I'm just sick over it. I, we certainly sympathize with those who, who want a better life. My grandfather wanted a better life. And so he got up online and he went to the consulate wherever it was in Russia. And he turned to the century, 1900, and he got, he got here, worked. Saved enough money, sent the money home, brought in his wife seven years later and my father, etc. That's how it was done before we had a criminal administration bringing them in for cheap labor to satisfy the worst business bureau and the owners of Microsoft, Google, and all of the other companies that are lobbying. Like uh, the guy who owns uh, Facelberg. Facelberg. I don't know what his company is. is Zuckleface? I don't, I don't know his name. Melvin Zuckleface, who owns Zuckleberg. I don't know his name. But why would Mev Melvin Zuckleface of Zuckelbook wa want cheap labor to make more money? Zuckleface doesn't have enough money. Zuckelberger wants more money, so he needs cheap labor. But what doesn't, see, what doesn't compute for me, lady, lady, hold it. Before you get out of that limousine, I know you really want to listen to me, but you're making believe you're amused by me, and it's just an entertainment for you. So hold it a minute, lady. Hold it. Tell your driver to leave WABC on in New York City and everywhere else that you're listening to me. Lady, listen to me. The lady in the limousine especially listen to me. You yourself are not immune to these diseases. You yourself are not immune to the criminals that are coming in between the ages of 15 to 17 disguised as little children. You yourself are not immune to, God forbid, rape, murder, mayhem, identity theft. No, you're not immune to any of this. But your government is doing it to you. You know why? Because you're the lady in the limousine who is so greedy, so greedy for a slight bit of attention that you'll throw yourself like a slave in front of your master to get invited to the White House. And that's why he's able to get away with this. The world is on fire. The Middle East is on fire. There's a new Cold War with Russia because of your Democrat psychotics. Libya went up in smoke because of Hillary Clinton. Egypt was almost lost until they threw out the Muslim Brotherhood. Your country is burning now. Think about the crime and the violence. You think it's only in going to be in Tijuana or Colombia? The left blames the right. Left wing says, make them citizens, get them on the public dole. The right wing blames the left. We say you invited them here and we can't support them. What's the real problem? You know what the real problem is? It's a lifeboat that's full. And there's such a thing called a saturated solution in chemistry where there's only so many people you can take in a lifeboat until eventually the lifeboat sinks. One more person can make that lifeboat. It's the old proverbial camel that a straw that broke the camel's back. Remember your high school chemistry? When you were stoned outside uh, that private high school in Manhattan? And you said, chemistry, that's for some moron who's not going to make any real money. I, I'm smarter than them. I'm smarter. I'm smarter. Look at me. Look where I am. Look at the parties I go to. Where the chemists go today? Huh? I'll be right back and tell you where the chemist went. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I, Michael Savage, trust to buy my gold and silver from, SwissAmerica.com. <laughs> I mean, I don't want to live in the past. I'm a perfectly unhappy American. I don't need to live in the past. <clears throat> but the fact is, as I was taught as a young liberal student in college, 
we should leave the world a better place than the one we inherited or the one we found. Isn't that what the liberals taught you in college? All of the fraudulent liberals who were trying to destroy everything you believed in were telling you the lie. The, speaking with a forked tongue. Oh, leave the world a better place than you found it. So I'm trying to leave the world a better place than I found it, and they're trying to make it as worse as they can, as fast as they can. What sane person on earth, tell me, would bring in infected immigrants that no one can pay for? Can anyone listening to this show justify this? Now, you certainly could justify bringing in laborers. I get that. I mean, if you're trying to get lower costs in your, in your labor, let's say you're a greedy contractor who's a pig and wants to pay people below union wages. You pay people minimum wage. You can pick them up on the side of a curb. They give them eight bucks an hour. And the coyote gets 15, maybe. You can pay the coyote 15. They give the poor guy seven bucks an hour off the book, books. And you get to take home money enough to buy a second pickup truck and take your children on a second vacation. I get it. I mean, the, the basic essence of all of life is, is uh, larceny. Larceny is in the hearts of all men. I mean, no one's a saint. No, larceny is in the hearts of all men. I mean, no one, no one is a saint. I get that. But laws are put in place to prevent this kind of larcenous behavior. We're not asking your conscience to control you. That's long gone. There's no conscience anymore. You know, they used to say God is dead. I think it was Nietzsche who wrote God is dead. Well, Savage wrote The Conscience is Dead. It was killed by Prozac and uh, ESPN. But uh, on a serious note, the fact of the matter is what sane person on earth would bring in, not laborers, but two-year-olds, four-year-olds, four-year-olds, six-year-olds, how are they going to work? How is a young mother who is illiterate in Spanish, can't read it, can't read it or write it, how is she going to contribute to this society's labor needs? Moron! You, that idiot lady getting out of the limousines, drunk from your stupid lunch at the museum. It's you who can save America. Why am I yelling? Why does it matter to me? Because I, Michael Savage, am an immigrant son. And I believe in America. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. It is the Savage Nation. Dare I say the king of talk radio? Will anyone be offended if I say that? I have a 20 share uh, on streaming radio. You say, well, that's not terrestrial radio. It doesn't count. All right. Exclude what you want. You can say anything you want, but someone's listening to the show. Someone needs this message. Someone appreciates me saying what I say. So let's hear what you have to say. Kurt on WBAP in Dallas. Go ahead, please. You're on the Savage Nation. Michael, first of all, you are big here. There's no doubt about it. And uh, you, there are people rising up on this invasion, and that's what this is. And you're correct about liberalism being a mental disorder. What other, what, what other conclusion could you come to? None. We're invading our country. I've got, I've got a thing, a Twitter account called Stop the Buses here in the Metroplex. Uh, mm -hmm. I appreciate you letting me get that out there. I'm trying to enlist all Tea Party groups, conservative groups, people that can think. And we're going to protest Clay Jenkins, this county commissioner, out of control, unilaterally, bringing thousands into Dallas. Yeah, that's right. The citizens can block this. I agree with you. This is our only recourse. What they did in Murrieta, they, they did in Virginia at the town hall. I guess Massachusetts and Michigan as well. People don't want this. The governor of Nebraska didn't even know that they were surreptitiously sneaking uh, illegal alien children into a state. People are right. furious. This has got to stop. It's got to stop now. I get it. I get it. But who's going to stop them when Obama's intent on busting the borders and violating his, his constitutional oath? Who's going to stop him? Only the people on the streets is what's left. That's all we got. Well, that's what he wants. Do you think he wants the chaos? We're going to be peaceful, and we're going to do it the peaceful way. Okay, my friend. Thank you very much. 855-400-7282. WABC Lewis, welcome to the Savage Nation. Thank you, Mike. Um, uncle Mike. Like the city. Yeah. Right. I'm 52 years old. I know you're a little older, but you're my uncle. Okay. But, uh, Mike, I, I just I'm, I'm watching Fox News. I lost him, Mike. Where, where has our country gone? They got 15 minutes on this lady on this yacht doing something with heroin to this billionaire. And meanwhile, you got Israeli burning. You got our borders burning. Where has our... That's why we're lost, Michael. The, the media, we're, it's gone. Where has it gone, Michael? 
Why, you think it's over? You've actually said you're thrown in the towel? I do, Mike. There's two more years left. I wish I can be, uh, you know, just sleep it off for two years. No, no, I know. But, uh, see, this is the problem. If we lived in a, in a parliamentary system, he'd be thrown out. There'd be a vote of no confidence. See, we wouldn't have to impeach him. He could just be thrown out. But the fact of the matter is we don't. We live in a dictatorship punctuated by democracy every uh, four years. So we're... So there are other other avenues to stop this man. I want to be a rumpel. And the other avenues consist of lawful acts of disobedience by the citizens. Lawful acts of disobedience are required when you have a rogue government that's acting in an illegal manner. I, I look, it's been done in other countries when when a dictatorship has emerged. L let me read everyone a letter on the on the program that just came out from Senator Sessions, dear colleague. I want to inform you of a development that threatens the foundation of our constitutional republic. On July 3, 2014, the National Journal reported, quote, Obama made it clear he would press his executive powers to the limit. He gave quiet credence to recommendations from La Raza and other immigrant groups that between 5 million to 6 million adult illegal immigrants could be spared deportation under a similar... F well, he goes on and on. He says what the president is contemplating would be a nullification of the Immigration and Nationality Act by the executive branch of government. He said, indeed, it would be an executive nullification of our borders as an enforceable national boundary. Did you hear this? As you know, he continues, over the last five and a half years, the president has routinely bypassed Congress in order to suspend enforcement of our immigration laws. He then goes on with a solution. Here's what he says. If Congress simply passes a supplemental spending bill without these preconditions, it is not a question or if the president will suspend more immigration laws, but only how many he will suspend. Congress cannot surrender to this lawlessness, writes Jeff Sessions. Acting in defense of Congress, our constituents and their communities, we must stand firm. This transcends politics. It is about our duty as constitutional office holders. It is about the solemn oath we all took as members of Congress. Now, he's one of only 100. The other 99 seem to be in line. Well, I'd say about 90 of them are in line with this disease. 855 Let's see what America has to say about this. David on oh, one's there right now. Let's go to WMAL in Washington, D.C. Joe, welcome to the Savage Nation. Michael, if American citizen parents had taken their children and placed them on these mule trains and sent them thousands of miles across dangerous territory, they'd be arrested and thrown in jail for, for child endangerment. And my point is, we should be finding these uh, illegal alien children's parents and relatives in the U.S. and arresting them and deporting them for child endangerment. Right. So what's the issue then? Well, my issue is it's an absolute double standard. The Democrats are almost like glorifying that these uh, parents are, you know, doing the right thing by, you know, getting their kids here, and it's just such a sad, sorry state. But if it was on the flip side, we'd be arrested. Uh-huh. So what's the answer then? Well, I think the answer is, number one, we need a president and a attorney general that's actually going to enforce the existing immigration laws. Uh, number two, then of course you have to secure secure the border. Mm hmm. Well, good luck. Let's see if the Republicans step up to the plate. WFTL in Florida, Mariner, you're up on the Savage Nation. Go ahead, please. Yeah, I might. Uh... I think that uh, the question of how could anybody allow diseased individuals into the country, uh, uh, you know, so deliberately is easily answered and understandable if you assume that Obama wants to destroy the United States in its present form, and to do that would lead to the reformation of America in a new form somewhere between Western Europe, socialism, and Soviet Union communism. Is that what you think he's trying to do? Exactly, Mike. I've studied this. I've read everything I could about Obama and how he, he became what he is. 
And I've come to the conclusion that is indeed his aim. He's not uh, inept. He's not fumbling. He's not even making the decisions. He's simply a front man for a group of people that uh, chose him a long time ago to be a projection of their desire, of their uh, vision of, a, of what America would be, which is a transnational vassal state. Mm -hmm. Well, I hope you're wrong. That's all I can say. I really do. WABC, Paul, you're next up. Go ahead. Let's hear what you have to say. Hi, Mike. How are you doing today? I was uh, driving along in my car in Bronx, New York, and I was born and raised here. And I pulled up alongside of a Puerto Rican American who was flying a Puerto Rican flag on his antenna and on his uh, rearview mirror. And he was an older gentleman, maybe 62 years old. And I pulled up and I opened the window and I asked him, I said, how come you're not flying the American flag? And his response to me was, because I no like in his broken English accent. That's right. He no like. He only like the greenback. He only like the greenback. So, I, so we're bringing in hateful third worlders who have no respect for our borders, language, and culture. Now, why would anyone do that if they respected their own country? Who would bring in people like that? Well, the U.S. government, of course. But why? Why? I'm sorry to tell you because I, I wrote it last Friday. It's the replacement theory. They're trying to replace one population with another. A malleable a semi-literate population that's easily controlled. I mean, I don't know how else to put it. Thank you for that call. Let's take the next caller from around America and around the uh, state of California. WBAP Tim, welcome to the Savage Nation. Hi, Mr. Savage. Uh, all we do is talk about the problems. We're not talking about how to fix it. The American voter is the problem, not the politicians. Until we do something about these voters... I say shun these people in Texas. These Texas Democrats are going to destroy our state. I have people that know people that move here to get out of New York to open a restaurant, and they're still going to vote Democrat. I will never go to their restaurant. I'll sit in front of it with a sign saying these are liberals. We should shun these people until they are no longer welcome in this country. What I don't understand is why liberals don't understand that they're digging their own uh, grave, so to speak. That's what I can't understand. I mean, do they not understand what they're doing now? I, I'm understanding of the fact that they need cheap labor. And there was an article on big business interests making amnesty push in states and border crisis. And so you look at the chambers of commerce. You look at a guy named Stephen Mungo, the CEO of Mungo Homes, who said that he needs additional talent demand that can be filled through immigrants being able to stay here with a more effective visa program and go to work. Now, on the face of it, that makes sense. <clears throat> but he's not talking about the children coming in who don't work or the mothers of the children who do not work. Mungo went on to say that, quote, we just don't have enough high-quality workers available to us any longer to take care of the current need and certainly would not have it going forward. High-quality workers? Mungo Holmes. Dairy and pizza groups in Wisconsin call for amnesty. In Tennessee, the CEO of the Tennessee Hospitality Association, Ralph Schultz, uh, and the president CEO of the Nashville Area Chamber of Commerce said amnesty legislation is needed because the Middle Tennessee region is expecting a shortage of 22,000 workers throughout this decade. So, of course, they want cheap labor, but what about bringing in children two years old? How does that fit? How about bringing in diseased people, gangbangers? How does that fit? I don't understand it. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. That's now, as I've said to you before, the Al Sharpton of the right, who is Glenn Beck. Glenn Beck is now the Al Sharpton of the right. In order to grandstand and, of course, to represent the interests of his church, the Mormon church, he is grandstanding and joining the side of the amnesty crowd. Listen to clip five. This is Glenn Beck. The Al Sharpton of the right, of the of the we right. Have reason to be really angry, and some people believe that um, I'm just going to make things worse. But uh, I believe I have a responsibility to God, and I think <laughs> we all do. He tells us to um, love one another to, under the least of our brothers. Yeah, 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 Glenn, you're doing it for God. Yeah, you and Margot. Yeah, you're doing it for God, Glenn. Glenn, listen to me. 
my friend, I wish you the best. But you're not fooling anyone, Glenn. You're just a grandstander. You're doing it for God. Huh? You're not doing it because uh, you get something out of it, huh, Glenn? Let me tell you something, Glenn. If you feed more of them, more of them will come. If you provide more services, more of them will come, Glenn. And I know that you're a, a God-believing Mormon. And I know you really believe that you're doing God's work by feeding them and clothing them on the border. You're not doing it for any uh, reasons of avarice. No, Glenn, you would never do that. That's below you. Why don't you take a hundred of them to your ranch? Why don't you give up your great fortune and follow the way of Gandhi? Give up your fortune to these illegals, because that would be God's work, wouldn't it? Because you're asking the rest of us to pay for them. Why don't you lead by example, Glenn, and give up your uh, benefits, the benefits of your Margot-like life? How do you feel about Glenn Beck joining the amnesty crowd? How do you feel about Glenn Beck joining La Raza? How do you feel about Glenn Beck joining, uh, um, well, shall I say, becoming the Al Sharpton of the right? How do you feel about Glenn Beck appeasing Obama? Listen to clip seven, Glenn Beck again, appeasing Obama. His definition of justice may be different than my definition of justice. Uh, my definition, the government is to provide justice. And, um, uh, and, and it's our job to provide mercy. I think the government is failing on justice. Okay, sure, Glenn. But you want the rest of us to pay for your sins, in other words. You want the rest of America to pay for our sins. And, of course, Glenn... I realize that as a high school dropout, you don't have the educational capacity to follow through on your own thinking. But think for a moment, Glenn, about the infected children with TB or coming into the country. You wouldn't want them in the schools with your children, would you? I wouldn't. Where should we educate them, Glenn? Have you thought that through uh, on your little truck ride to the, to the border, old Glenn? Does anyone disagree with me? Does anyone agree that Glenn Beck is doing God's work and he's doing the right thing by becoming the Al Sharpton of the right, by joining La Raza and joining uh, um, Obama? Why do you think Glenn Beck is doing this? Why? Why is Glenn Beck suddenly joining the amnesty crowd? I think I know why. A, he's never met an op uh, a crisis to go to waste. I mean, he's following the Alinsky school. <laughs> he's doing exactly what he said Obama does. Never let a crisis go to waste, right? So he sees a crisis. Why not jump in on it? You know, so he's jumping in on it, making believe he's doing it for God. Listen to clip four now. Listen to this one. I'm going to be serving uh, two different meals, and one in the morning, then one in the afternoon. Uh, then we're going to be unloading these trucks and making sure that the soup uh, kitchens and the pantries of these churches are full for quite some time. Oh, really? You mean the children are starving, Glenn? Are you accusing Obama of starving these poor immigrant children? The last I saw, they were being served tamales, which they rejected as not being hot. Do you remember that, Glenn? The day they got here, they were given hot tamales that were not hot enough, and they sent them back. Our servants, uh, our waiters called the Border Patrol, w were reporting that they were sending back the food that it was not hot enough for them. So I suggest, Glenn, that you make sure that your uh, burners on your truck have sufficient sterno in them to satisfy this extremely sophisticated clientele that you're going to be serving. Maybe you ought to open up a restaurant on the border called Glenn Beck's Sombrero Inn. Glenn, why don't you open up a restaurant? Call it Glenn Beck's Inn. Because I've, I think really, Glenn, it's going to soon be Glenn Beck's out of business. I think it'll soon be Glenn Beck's out of business if you keep this up. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning. The Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. We do care about the details, but ultimately in pursuit of this goal, 
which is to balance these competing equities, which is to meet the basic humanitarian needs of the individuals who are apprehended along the border, to ensure that they receive the due process to which they're entitled, uh, but also to enforce the law as efficiently as possible. But go on now to what he really is saying about the uh, man in the White House. The next one, Neil. Uh, I think that there are some aspects of that that we are able to do with our executive authority alone. That is why, for example, you, the president has acted using his executive authority to deploy criminal, additional criminal. resources. You're a complicit um, criminal, you double-talking liar, you. Court system. That would allow us Okay, you see the double-talking spokesmouth in a sane society. People will remember what the spokesmouth has just said. He's been using his glib mouth his whole life. To sell lies, so Obama hired him because, as you well know, by the Peter principle, the bigger the liar you are, the higher up the food chain of politics you go. So now this young liar, who is now the spokesmouth, the current spokesmouth for Obama, is saying with a geo cheerful guy, oh golly, B, executive authority, uh, yes, indeedy, we've got something brand new here. We're repackaging dictatorship. That's right. It's called executive authority. By golly, we just love it over here in the Obama White House. Now, we know it's dictatorship, but golly, it's a beautiful thing we're selling you rubes out there. At least I think that that's what you're hearing, right? And yet Glenn Beck joined them. Now, look, the problem is we see rows of children stacked in government warehouses, sick and tired, tuberculosis, swine flu. These are the huddled masses. But if you remember what I taught you before, uh, someone challenged me on this three weeks ago when he said he's in favor of taking them all in because the Statue of Liberty, he reminded me, said, give us your poor and huddled masses, etc. Yeah, but we didn't have a welfare state then, did we? See, you, you, you brought in the poor and huddled masses to work in the, in the, in the factories. Even child children were put into factories. You didn't know that. It wasn't about the huddled masses when that was put on the Statue of Liberty. It was about cheap labor. That's why they were living 16 to a room in tenements in New York City. They were working. Everybody worked. Nobody got a handout. There was uh, no, uh, no food stamps, no government cheese, no free medical care, no free legal care, no lawyers, nothing. So sure, they needed the huddle masses to make the machines run. We don't have uh, the ability to carry these people in our society. And many of them are sick. Many of them are criminals. Everyone knows that on the border, except the lady getting into the limousine in Manhattan who thinks it's all a joke. And yet we have a humanitarian streak in us. How many more can we take in? The sick and the tired. I believe that the humanitarian thing to do is to put the military on the border immediately. Certainly the National Guard of Texas, National Guard of Arizona, National Guard of New Mexico could be put on the border right now without the government, uh, without the uh, criminal centralized authority saying you can or cannot do it. That's what the National Guard is for is to protect the state, for God's sakes. Governor Perry, instead of talking, should put the National Guard down there. See, that's why I don't trust Governor Perry. He's big on using the crisis like Glenn Beck is. Everyone's using this crisis to their own ends, but they're not doing anything. Put the Texas National Guard on the border. Put the Arizona National Guard on the border and tell the government, uh, federal government, we're not going to let you send infected people into my state. It's a matter of public safety for the children. Period. End of story. Then set up hospitals, bring in doctors without borders, treat them for the diseases, give them a meal, give them some money, and send them home immediately. You got the buses. You got DHS buses, probably thousands of them doing nothing. Put the DHS buses on the border and bring them all back right over the border to Mexico. Return to sender. Don't take them to Guatemala or El Salvador. Put them in Mexico. It was the Mexican government that was complicit in bringing them in, so give them back to Mexico. This is a, a plan between the Mexican government and elements within the Obama White House. You can pretty much figure out who. This didn't happen by accident. So I'm sorry you have to send them back to Mexico. That's all. Give, they'll give them a nice home, I'm sure. I'm sure they will. Health threat to a nation, big business interests making amnesty push, etc., but many of these young people, how are children going to work? You understand that? 855 is the phone number. Let's take some calls. WABC, Bobby, welcome to the Savage Nation. Hey, Michael, you got the best show on the air. I love to hear you every day. Um, Good. I, agree with you. And, and the whole I don't know about drunk. I don't know about drunk, but why would he think his listeners would support amnesty 
of the type he is performing here with his with his rubbish about God. Do you really think he's doing it for the sake of God? I, 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 he says he is. I mean, I, I think it's religious guilt. He's got like some kind of guilt. You know, he claims he is. I mean, you know, a lot of these people think out these religious people think that just because we want to send these people back that we're ungodly and we're not. We was just ourselves. Well, my answer to all of these uh, uh, people who wear God in their sleeve is charity begins at home. How about America's poor? I, why do you think Why do you think poor African Americans are screaming at Obama, calling him the worst president in American history? Because he should be taking care of America's poor, shouldn't he? I agree with him, and I I, I deal with a lot of African Americans too. I mean, I have a care business, and I, I see the poor in Poughkeepsie in New York here. And there's a lot of poverty and... Uh, right. did, you, did you say you have a cab business, Bobby? Cab, C-A-B? Yeah, yeah I, drive, I, drive, I drive a cab. I drive a lot. You know, it's funny you brought that up because on an re unrelated topic, I, there's a company called Uber, you know that right now, who's cutting into all the taxi drivers. Have they permitted that into New York uh, City now? Yes, I saw it. As a matter of fact, I went down to JFK yesterday. Here's what I want to know. I, my, my son told me last night that this little company created by a bunch of techies without conscience has bypassed all of the legitimate taxi drivers in this country. And I said, when I was a kid, if a man, a poor immigrant, could save enough money as a taxi driver to buy a medallion, they used to have to spend, I, used to, I couldn't believe the numbers. In my day now, they would spend a fortune, they'd save, they'd buy a medallion, and gave them the right to, own a, to drive a taxi in New York. Is that still true? Don't taxi drivers need to own a medallion? Right, and now it's like, I think it's like almost a half a million dollars to buy. So all the taxi drivers, many of whom are immigrants, Saved their life savings, bought a medallion. Basically, they've been put out of business by these techie, uh, techies without a conscience who just, you, you, you go on an app and suddenly a, a, a gypsy cab driver shows up? Yep. Is that great? How is that, how is that legally possible? How could the New York City or State Taxi Commission permit this? You got the blind here as mayor. He's the worst. He's another, another progressive. So you're saying that this communist mayor has permitted this company to destroy the taxi franchises in New York City and they still vote for him? Well, he's not stopping first. He's stopping everything else. And he's ruining everything else. Why not? This is, he's, he's, you know, he's par for course here. I mean, he's doing a good... He, but isn't, he, isn't he on vacation now in Italy with his uh, wonderful family? I thought he was going on a nice vacation in Italy. Has he left yet? That's a good one. Hopefully, hopefully he took a one-way ticket and he stayed at the Lean and Tower of Pisa. Yeah, maybe he would decide that he wants to be the mayor of Pisa. Thank you for the call, Bobby. 855-407-282. It's the Savage Nation. You know, there is a bill that's been put forward that could stop this. I don't want to read it because those technical bills bore me, I'll be honest with you. But it's a bipartisan bill with a Democrat of Hispanic uh, ancestry from Texas with a Republican. They could stop this immediately. Why, why do you think Obama's wanting this to go on? Because he created the crisis. WJR, Sandy, you're on the Savage Nation. Hi, I was calling to disagree with you on the promise that Glenn Beck is for amnesty. Um, I've listened to him for a long time. He's totally, totally against it. All the people he supports in government are totally against it. Then why, why is he pandering to the mobs of illegals on the border? I don't think he's pandering to him. I think. Oh, wait, wait, wait. What, what's with the food truck? These children are not starving. That's a, that's a grandstanding. Yeah. These children are not starving. What do you mean he's serving them meals out of a truck? They're eating like kings in these shelters. There's no starvation. It's a, don't you understand how blatantly cynical this is? No, I think you're cynical and envious, and you you condemn every other host that basically. Uh, I, so wait, you mean if I were a good man, I would bring a truck to the border and serve them tamales? No, I think that's not your idea of helping. What, so, but do you mean that's your idea of helping? Don't no. you understand that if you provide services for illegal aliens, more of them will come? Okay, do you, do you want to listen to what his... No, no, why don't you listen to someone who knows more about it than you do, because I've been involved in this for over 20 years. Don't you understand if you provide services for illegal aliens, more of them will come? Isn't that a logical statement? The idea is to help them while they're here and send their butts back. And I'm send their butt. What do you mean their butts back? What kind of statement is that? Send their butts back. Send them back to where they came from. He wants them to go back. You don't understand anything of what, what's going on, do you? They're not starving. Don't you understand that? No, I know they're not starving. He's so why would he then send a food truck if they're not hungry? They're being sent to various churches. Why is he sending a food truck if they're not hungry? 
Because it's, because it's a grandstanding publicity event. Don't you get it? Can't you see through the publicity uh, event that he's performing? Do you know of all the other charity services he's provided? Like, you know, Are you aware of the fact that he is fronting for the Mormon church? No, I know you said the other day. Are you aware of the fact that the churches are making billions of dollars on the illegal immigrant crisis? He helped. I mean, I'm asking you a simple question. Are you aware that there's a lot of money at stake here? Money regarding what? His money? You, you don't know that the churches are making billions of dollars in federal grants, do you? Are you aware of that? No. See? Well, let me educate you. The Catholic charities received over $2 billion last year from the federal government. Did you know that? No. All right, well, I'm trying to alert you to what really is going on. I don't want you to be gulled by these people. They're not doing it because they care about the immigrants necessarily. There's big money involved, miss. It's not about me. It's about what's real here. Billions of dollars are being given out by the federal government to churches to provide for the immigrants, Sandy. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Becoming... And I th you know, I thank you for at least challenging me, because that's the beginning of wisdom. The phone number here is 855-407-282. It's 17 minutes after the hour. I'll be right back. I mean, we all love the children, and we all have a responsibility. America is great because America is good. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I, Michael Savage, trust to buy my gold and silver from, SwissAmerica.com. Look, once they're here, I'm not saying to be cruel to them or anything like that, but if we, if we accept, let's say we accept these children, we, we let them to stay here in America, we give them good homes, what is this going to say to all, everybody else? Are we prepared to be overwhelmed? Because that's exactly okay. what's going to happen. Oh. We allow these 7,000 children to stay here and grow up in America and go to our schools. What do we say to the 60,000 that are going to follow them? Right. And the 150,000 that will follow Can we house them all, Father? Do we have the whereabouts? We can't even well. take care of our own kids here now. See, that's an intelligent man of Hispanic origin uh, uh, who shocked the stooge on CNN when he came out against illegal immigration. Now, let me talk about the money. Catholic Charities is the national office of more than 160 local Catholic Charities agencies nationwide. About $2 billion of its budget comes from the Faith-Based Initiatives Office of the Obama government. Let me repeat that. In 2010, Catholic Charities had revenues of $4.7 billion, $2.9 billion of which came from Obama's office, your tax dollars. Of the $4.7 billion, only about $140 million came from donations from churches. Most of it came from corporations, but the largest amount, $2.9 billion of Catholic Charities' uh, revenue came from Obama's office. So when you hear people talking about it's, the, it's God's will and God's way, they're front men, they're con men in my opinion. It's all about the money. And I made my point. I don't have to beat this one up. You can take it any way you want. Sean on WJR, go ahead, please. You're on the Savage Nation. Sean, you're on the Savage Nation. Go ahead, please. All right, bad, bad connection. That's bad, bad call screening follow-up. guess he was ordering a pizza just now. WABC, E. Frank, welcome to the Savage Nation. Yes, uh, Michael Savage, I'm just going to let you know, Mr. de Blasio, our mayor, has actually proposed a solution to illegal crossing of the border and the increase in the depletion of our services in municipal governments. He has proposed, and you know very well what he did this, uh, these last, this last month, he proposed the municipal ID card for all city residents because he believes that in that fashion, eventually all illegal aliens who are in the city of New York will register themselves, and eventually they get tired of depleting our services, and they will go and move back with their families back where they came from. I don't know what point you're making. You're saying it's good that they come in? No, it's terrible that they come here. But Mayor de Blasio says that he has a theory that by giving them uh, documentation of some type, that they will probably get tired of living here and we'll go back why would they get tired of living here why would they get tired of living here if everything's free 
Well, Mayor de Blasio says that once what do you mean, make... I get tired? Why would you get tired of living here? You don't have to speak the language and the idiots send you a check every month? You don't have to send. You don't have to speak the language, and they s let you get free medical care. While in your country, a horse is treated better. It makes no sense. They're all part of the same communist conspiracy, in my opinion. It's that simple. Eight five five four hundred seven two eight two. It's the Savage Nation. Let's hear what you have to say about all of this. Deborah on WBAP. Welcome to the Savage Nation. Yes, Michael. Can you hear me? Yes, of course I can. Okay, one, I was just thinking off the top of my head, but one solution, a small solution might be that since these unaccompanied minors are here, their parents have neglected them, they put them in physical endangerment. The parents should be arrested for child abuse, by the way, by the United Nations. Yeah, and they... So if we had a United Nations that was worth anything, they would track down the parents who put these children on this migration journey and arrest the parents for child abuse. Correct. And what they... Maybe what one solution would be is that, you know, terminate, do some expedited hearings, some emergency legislation. That's terminate. right, but there is emergency. A, a bill was written two days ago by a Democrat from Texas and a Republican from Texas, and Obama has ignored it. It would immediately change the law permitting America to deport them instantly. But, so, they, so Obama's a liar when he says he wants them to go back. He's a liar. He's created the crisis. An endless wave of floods will come across the border. And they're not all children. And I remember what I said to you at the beginning, lady in the limousine, tuberculosis, scabies, swine flu. Do you understand what I'm saying? The man is threatening our constitutional republic itself. I'll stop right here. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Does anybody remember the scandals that Obama has been involved in? Do you understand what he's doing to you? Do you have any idea that he, he covers up one scandal with the next, and then he makes them larger than the one before it, so you forget the one just before it? The one that was just before the flood of illegals from Central America was the VA hospital scandal, which has now been swept off the char off the table by this diabolical administration. It's a diabolical administration. Forget any other word. They're villainous in what they're doing. In other words, instead of meeting the problem even halfway, acknowledging the problem, trying to fix it, they create a bigger problem. So now we're going to go back in time together. We have the flood of Ill illegals being brought in by this administration on purpose. It was planned. Prior to that, we had the VA scandal of veterans dying in hospital hallways. Prior to that, if I remember correctly, we had the IRS scandal with hard drives being destroyed, something done only by criminals. If you destroy a hard drive, that's a criminal act. What preceded the hard drive scandal of the IRS? Does anyone remember? Well, you remember Benghazi? That was five scandals ago. What preceded Benghazi? Do you remember the uh, Fast and Furious scandal from the beginning of his first term where they sent machine guns to drug cartels in Mexico? Have you forgotten that? How many scandals can an administration be directly involved in and get away with them? The answer is apparently any number when you have no opposition party and no press. That's all. It's that simple. So what can I do about it? I'm only a commentator. I'm not, I have no control, no power. I have no authority. Even if I were U.S. Senator, I want you to see how bad the situation is. If I were U.S. Senator, what power would I have? The answer is none. None. If you have a, a weak-willed opposition party under the uh, leadership of a weak-willed leader like John Boehner, what can you do about it? Well, what you can do about it is what people are doing. They're lining up, and they're stopping the buses. They're making the buses back up. They're not letting them into their schools. They're saying, not in my backyard. And even Democrats are doing this. Maryland, of all places, Democrats, Maryland, as they said no to the illegals. No to the illegals. That's Nancy Pelosi's uh, home, hometown. Maryland said no. Why? Because they know it will bust the schools and bust the hospitals even further. I mean, even they have limits. And what I'm trying to tell you is that I'm appealing, actually, to the senior members of the Democrat Party, no matter how li liberal they may be, to stop this administration before they kill the country. Do you understand what I just said to you? There comes a point that only the leaders of the Democrat Party can stop what's going on. We can't count on the Republicans. 
There's no press. There's no Supreme Court to him. Only the Democrat leadership can stop this. So go back in the scandals. Follow the timeline. Start with Fast and Furious. Go all the way forward. I've probably forgotten 10 of them. You remember what he passed on a New Year's Eve while you were asleep? Do you know about the NDAA? You know what that law is? Do you know what the NDAA is? Remember that scandal? In the middle of the night, in the middle of the night, the secret puppet masters uh, behind this Marxist socialist death spiral that threatens to destroy the free nation we love passed the law, passed the law that permits the U.S. government to arrest anyone without a court order for any reason. You understand what I just said to you? I, I, you, can, you can't make this stuff up. It sounds like fiction. You know, if this goes on and we lose the country, no one will remember what's going on. We'll just lose the country. It'll be wiped away from our history books by Doris Kearns Goodwin and the other fabulous biographers of the government media complex. And what I'm saying to you, if we do manage to save this republic and people do look back into the Marxist socialist death spiral that Obama Holder and the four horsewomen of the apocalypse have put us in, they will understand that there's been a timeline of all the scandals to understand what he did to us and how he did it and in what way. It'll be, it will be studied in school. It will be studied in school in the future to see what can happen when you have a rogue administration that's villainous. That's what we're facing right now. I know it sounds like the guy's crazy. Who is this guy on the radio talking like that? How dare he say that about such a nice man? Well, just I'll tell you, it's one man's opinion. It's all it is. My view of the world as it is. You'll have to forgive me. I have a view of the world. Am I entitled to it? Well, of course you are, but not to attack the president. That makes you a racist. Anyone who attacks Obama is a racist. Isn't that what Holder said yesterday? He said anyone who attacks the president is a racist. We would worked for them for so many years. Why should they stop now? Why should they stop now? How about those who attacked, attacked uh, Clarence Thomas while I defended him? Were they a racist too? How about those who attacked uh, Condoleezza Rice? Were they a racist too? How about those who attacked Alan West? Uh, were they a racist too? You didn't hear the administration talking about them? So you know it's not about racism. It's about politics. Anyone who attacks Obama's Marxist-Leninist policies is an anti-Marxist, anti-Leninist. That's all. That's what the real answer is. Anyway, this is the problem. It's that simple. The NDAA, one thing after the other. You know, something happened last week that came down on Thursday that everyone missed in the media. Do you remember a year ago, an unarmed African-American woman lost her way in Washington, D.C., and drove in circles uh, with a, an infant in the back of her car, her infant, in a baby seat. She got lost in the maze around the White House, and she was executed by uh, the, the park police. Do you remember that? They violated all the laws uh, that were in place of never firing into a car that was stopped. They fired into the car and killed her. Do you remember that? They were found not guilty. All the police were let off the hook. By who? By Eric Holder's Justice Department. This is Eric Holder, the chief legal officer of the United States, held no one responsible for executing an African-American woman who got lost in the maze around the White House? Why'd they kill her? She was screaming Obama was the father of a baby. And that's crazy. She was delusional. We know that. But she was no, th she was no threat to, uh, to, uh, to anyone. She was lost. She was confused. She was dazed. And they killed her. Nobody went to jail. Not one word from marble mouth Jesse High Jackson. Not one word from the weight loss expert on MSNBC, the Freddy's Fashion Mart talk show host. Okay. Let's take some calls. WABC, Anna, welcome to the Savage Nation. Dr. Savage, you are so right about uh, the immune system. It's like a human. Society is like a human. If humans don't maintain their health, they get sick. We have good bacteria and bad bacteria. If you treat both of them as the same, say bacteria is good and can be good. And let's take everything in our system. That's what brings us to clinical death. To me, Omega is in clinical debt. Its immune system is compromised. And uh, the worst thing happens that uh, the media is one of them, 
and a brainwashing of people because the brain controls the body. So nobody can tell the truth anymore, nobody. The clinical death occurs before biological death, and it needs some very, very strict things to administer. I understand. I wrote a book on, on called Maximum Immunity in 1983 where I studied the immune system. It was at the beginning of the height of the AIDS crisis, and I talked in great detail about what happens when an immune system is uh, compromised. And I've said many times on this show that this nation is like the body politic is infected with an autoimmune disease where it turns on itself. But when you have defense cells, when you have defense cells such as that of the Justice Department turning on the body politic, that's the death of a nation. Right. It's the Justice Department that should be defending the nation, not attacking it. And Holder should be impeached. Holder should be impeached, not Obama. Thank you for the call. But what's the point of all of this? I, Whatever. Whatever. I tried my best. I told you I had that monologue with God the other day, where I told God when I faced him what I tried to do all these years, and he said, well, you had no effect. In fact, you made it worse. I said, why did I make it worse? I read all of these books. I documented what was coming. I talked about it over and over again, God, and the opposite happened. So finally God said to me last night, he said, don't blame yourself. You did the, you did the best you could. Sometimes the evil is so great, Michael, that it's like a tidal wave that you can't stop. Obama views America's role as a superpower with contempt. He sees our military might as a burden. That's why he decimated our military by purging all combat, career combat generals who would have stood up to him. Instead, I was shocked last week when I saw he appointed uh, a female as a four-star admiral. I have nothing against uh, women as admirals, but do you know that she cannot fly a jet? Now, how would you feel if you were a fighter pilot having to land on an aircraft carrier in a, in a rocking sea? before or after a mission, and your commander was a, an individual who never flew a plane, or that individual, the, quote, four-star admiral, this woman that Obama appointed, because after all, she's the first woman, and to top it off, and an African-American, those are her qualifications. Not that she flew 200 missions in combat in Iraq and Afghanistan with distinction. No, she never landed a Piper Cub on a land-based airport, let alone an F-21 Hornet on a carrier deck. How would you feel if she was the one giving the orders, launching you to go attack something? Would you, would you feel emboldened? You look at World War II pictures of the boys who flew those, those airplanes. You look at them. They looked up at their leaders with such love and such respect they were willing to die for them. You look at Britain in World War II, the boys from Cambridge primarily, who knew it was their national duty to defend England, knowing that they were basically on a suicide mission flying mission after mission after mission after mission to defend their homeland. What did they do with it? You know why? They looked up at their leaders like they were gods. Because their leaders had risked their own lives in naval, in, in combat, air, aerial combat. So they knew that they were talking to someone who did the same thing they were being asked to do. And yet Obama, in his continuous war against the military, disgraces the Navy by putting in a woman who never flew an airplane on a carrier deck. Now, if I'm mistaken, I apologize. But I'm pretty sure I'm correct in that. But let's go back to the other story. Neil, I want you to get the soundbite of the, of the African-American woman. We had it the other day on the log, I think on Monday, remember, or Friday. I said, how'd you guys miss it? Do we still have it, Neil? I know we had it yesterday, and I didn't play it. It's so important. You remember the African-American woman last year? Raise your hands in the audience if you know what I'm talking about. She got lost outside the White House. She was dri driven in circles. The Park Police Secret Service chased her. They cornered her. She had a baby in the back, and they shot into the car and executed her. There was a hearing, a whitewash, worse than the, uh, the hearing about who killed JFK. This was worse than the Warren Commission. And they said that uh, all men who shot her were innocent. Why, why did they, nobody was guilty, Neil? Do we have that? We have to find it when I come back. I'll be back in a minute. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. That's We're talking about immigrants and epidemics. We're talking about tuberculosis on the border, swine flu. We're talking about other diseases the Border Patrol is reporting. We're talking about the fact 
uh, that this is being covered up by the media government complex. Now, I also mentioned a story, which my hat tip goes to Rich Lieberman for sending it to me. He found it immediately. Terrifying video of moment. A mentally ill woman, she's an African-American woman, and that's very important, rammed White House barricade is released as officers who shot her dead are cleared of criminal charges. It's from Mail Online. I put it on michaelsavage.com. It came out only Thursday in the middle of another scandal. The images were released Thursday by Obama, uh, excuse me, by Holder's U.S. Attorney's Office. Okay? They come as the officers who fatally shot Miriam Carey after a high-speed car chase learned they will not face criminal charges. Prosecutors spent months investigating the shooting of Miss Carey. They concluded, listen to this, that officers from the Secret Service and the Capitol Police did not use excessive force. You mean executing an unarmed woman is not excessive force? We're living in an, in an upside-down universe. Listen to this. They concluded that officers from the Secret Service and the Capitol Police did not use excessive force and did not have the criminal intent required for prosecution. That's total garbage. We have the images of her running the barrier. We have the images of her going in circles, jumping the barricades near the White House. Yes, she did that. But then they, 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 they stopped her. They stopped her. The officer and another officer from the Secret Service come up to the car after it stopped. Are you listening? They come up to the car, and they fire nine rounds each into the car. The car crashes into a kiosk and comes to arrest. She had a baby in the back. She suffered five gunshot wounds to her neck and torso, one of which was fatal. This woman was a mentally ill person, had been diagnosed with postpartum depression and psychosis. In the months before the Washington incident, this woman told police officers at her Connecticut apartment that President Obama had communicated with her and had set up cameras to record her life for national news outlets. Obviously, she was psychotic. She was not under the influence of drugs or alcohol at the time. So a mentally ill African-American woman, unarmed, goes in circles, drives directly at the barriers, drives directly to Capitol Police officer, and these crazy Nazis from the Secret Service fire nine rounds into a car with a baby in it and kill her. And they're not prosecuted. Now listen to this. To build a criminal prosecution, the government would have had to have proven that the so-called officers used excessive force and willfully and intentionally broke the law by shooting her. U.S. Attorney Ron Macon said in a statement that something that you would have heard out of Nazi Germany, listen, quote, accident, mistake, fear, negligence, and bad judgment do not establish such a criminal violation the office of U.S. Attorney Ron Macon said in a statement. But a lawyer for the woman, Eric Sanders, said in a statement that the Justice Department's decision to exonerate the murderers was not surprising and does not affect her family's legal position in a wrongful death lawsuit against the Secret Service and Capitol Police. This came out Thursday night. They released the story in the pictures. Everyone missed it because Obama had engulfed us in another scandal. It was from Mail Online. We have no press left in the United States of America except the Internet. There's no newspapers left at all. We have to turn to England for our news. Strangely enough, isn't it? They don't even have the First Amendment, but yet they have a news, news business. We have the images of the shooting and the whole story of the execution of an unarmed, mentally ill African-American woman released by the government. All the officers who executed her were found not guilty. Have a nice day. It's the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, Psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. 
Well, we know the, the cartels were exploiting this and continue to exploit this crisis in South Texas, so it, it makes sense that MS-13 and other gangs would do the same. Uh, at the Nogales Processing Center in Nogales, Arizona, uh, the Red Cross has set up a bank of phones so that unaccompanied juveniles can call family members uh, back home or even in the U.S., uh, and these phones are being utilized by gang members uh, to recruit, to enlist, uh, to pressure people, uh, other juveniles, into joining the, the MS-13 gang. Uh, and the problem is we, we are unable to isolate these people uh, because they are juveniles. Our, our hands are tied. Welcome back to the Savage Nation. That's a Border Patrol Council member, Sean Moron, one of America's great heroes. He's like a George Washington, who is telling you that this so-called crisis of immigration is being used by the gangs to bring in gang members and to recruit other juveniles and that Obama has tied the hands of the Border Patrol from kicking them out. Listen to clip 14. It gets even more alarming. Well, we're being told that we have to look the other way. If we see gang tattoos, we're not allowed to treat them any differently than anybody else that's uh, applying uh, to, to be allowed to stay here or, or to uh, apply for asylum. Uh, we've had agents reporting that uh, some of these juveniles have reported that they have committed murders in their home country. Why would an administration want to bring in murderers and tell the Border Patrol you can't kick them out? Explain that to me, unless they have a plan for them. Uh, now let's listen to 15. It's a uh, security issue that, that we feel uh, could really snowball out of control, and, and it would put agents at risk. It puts the other detainees at risk. Uh, it's activity that needs to be stopped immediately. Now, because this story did not make it to the New York Post or the Daily News, it's not true. Is that correct? Because the, the old York Times didn't cover it, it's not true. Is that correct? Because the pancake make made up, um, oh, I have such contempt for them, I can't even make a joke about it. All of the men, the empty suits and the empty skirts in the media, because they're not reporting this, it's not real. That's a Border Patrol Council member, Sean Moran, telling you what's going on inside these places that Glenn Beck is feeding them food. Is Glenn Beck going to feed them a nice hot meal of tamales? Will Glenn Beck not discriminate because they have tattoos and he's not allowed to discriminate based on Obama's pre uh, precepts? Listen to me. This is very bad. It's out of control. Jeff Sessions has it right. Great U.S. Senator. And he said that the president is acting in such a lawless manner that Congress cannot surrender to this lawlessness. And he's warning other members of Congress to stay in the defense of Congress, our constituents, and their communities. He said it's about the solemn oath we all took as members of Congress. And he said if Obama is not stopped, he will nullify the Immigration and Nationality Act by executive order. He said it would be an executive nullification of our borders as an unenforceable national boundary. That's what Obama will do. We know we have a lawless rogue president. We know that. And he's laughing at us as we go on and on about this. So let me take some of your calls. Albuquerque Mike on KKOB, you're up on the Savage Nation. Go ahead, please. Hi, Michael. Thanks for putting me on. Hey, um, you know, I have to respectfully disagree with you. I mean, what I'm hearing day after day, and I have been listening to you lately, is this hysterical um, hate speech. And it's not American. Ah, oh, please well, get off the get off get off your your lie, will you please? You mean tuberculosis is not real? Not biblical. It's. I, I asked you a question: Is tuberculosis real or unreal? The gold standard for you, Michael, should be what would. Are you listening to me? You're not. You're not here to lecture me because it's my show, not yours. I don't know who you are. You obviously are in the immigration racket, and that's why you're taking offense. How can you sit there and support the importation of people from gangs? Let's start with the logical. You just heard a Border Patrol member tell you the gang members are coming in. How do you support this? Poor Pinto was. I don't care if they're best sellers. The poor Pinto was the best. Well, sir, uh, sir, I can't hear you. You got hysterical. What did you just say? Well, I said, look, you tell... No, no, you, you look. You look. You just heard a Border Patrol council member saying that many of these kids are murderers with gang tattoos and they can't send them back because Obama's tied their hands. How do you support that? I support it through the love of Christ. Christ loves everybody. It doesn't matter. Are you are you are you kidding me? Christ loves everybody. No. Well, it's, I have a suggestion. Why don't you invite some of the gang members into your house and see how much love they'll give you? 
I'm not feeding you. You're dirty. I'm not feeding you. You don't. Wait a minute. You just said Christ loves everybody. Why do you hate me if you love everybody? You mean you love gang members more than you love me? Oh, you oh, good grief. Come on. I, love I just asked you something. You just said you love everybody, but you hate me. How does that figure? I didn't say I hate you. Did those words... You just said you did. You said I'm dirty. You said I'm dirty, but the gang members with TB are clean. You parse the truth. You just said that I'm dirty, but you said you support TB infected people. Don't twist your words, mister. Okay. Don't twist your words. You're not browbeating. You're not browbeating the wife that you drove out of your house now. Just... You are not browbeating the children who ran away from you, you little worm, you. Oh, Michael, what... You are nothing. You are nothing. You're an enemy of this nation. From your Bible, You're an my... enemy of this nation. And if we had a sane nation, men like you would not be permitted to put out this, this kind of hatred. You're supporting the importation of disease and gang members, and you say you're a lover of Christ? I, well, exactly. You know what I mean? You're making... No, no, I don't know what you mean. You're a deranged liberal. Liberalism is a mental disorder. Liberalism. But if you love them so much, why don't you go down to the border and embrace somebody with tuberculosis and bring them home to fix them? Listen to me, Mr. Di didn't, didn't, wait a minute, excuse me. Reverend Damien embraced those with leprosy in Hawaii. And he cured them of leprosy by treating... He didn't cure them because they're incurable. He treated them and he got leprosy himself. Why don't you do what Reverend Damien, Damien did? Credentials, Michael. Why don't you go down to the border and show Christ's heart by embracing those with tuberculosis and taking them into your house? You don't believe... Why are you inflicting them on our school children? No Christian love. I just reported that a school reported that all the children in the class had to be tested for tuberculosis because one infected illegal alien was stuck into the classroom. Have you no love in your heart for the children... Uh, who were not infected prior to that day, sir? Michael, take a deep breath. You know, you, you think that you're winning, but when I hang up on you, no one will ever remember you. You will go back to your miserable little life. So if you have anything intelligent to say, I'm going to give you five seconds to say it. How, how would you know? Go back to your miserable little life, sir. Why don't you go embrace one of the infected children and bring them home? Do what Father Damien did with those with leprosy. Or to really show the kindness of your Christian heart, please go down to the border and ask the Border Patrol agents to introduce you to some of the gang members that they're having to introduce to America. And perhaps you can bring five of them home to your house. And let's see the love they give you. I'm sure you'll tell them that Christ loves them. But the only kind of love you'll ever give these children is the type of love that the church has eschewed, my friend. Lexington, Kentucky. Jim, you're on the Savage Nation. Go ahead, please. Yes, I'll make it short. Uh, I believe Obama wants gun control, and he knows if he lets all these bad people into this country, they're going to do some of the crimes they will do will be with guns, so that will give them a foothold for more gun le legislation. Wow. Well, I hope that he's not that cynical, although I would put nothing past him. Thank you very much. KCMO in the heart of America. Rick, welcome to the Savage Nation. Yeah, hi, Michael. Uh, you know, this whole thing is a carnival of extortion because uh, these supposedly poor indigent children are paying between four and $7,000 a piece to come across Mexico with what money, I'm wondering. Uh, you know? Right. In other words, the mules are bringing them in. The cartels are being paid to bring them in. That, is what you're saying. So the families are, are funding this invasion. Yes. But the, okay. The, I think the right. Well, the answer is really simple. We don't need any legislation for... See, Rick Perry, the governor of Texas, could put the Texas National Guard on the border. Why doesn't he do that? <laughs> for anyone listening, I, I want an answer to this question before I take a break. I want somebody from Texas to answer this question. I have a huge audience in Texas. My ratings are through the sky on WBAP. Why is Governor Perry, who is giving all these speeches against illegal immigration, not putting the Texas National Guard on the border? He has a sworn duty to defend the state of Texas from invasion, to protect the borders of the state of Texas, amongst other things, to protect the health and safety and welfare of the people of the state of Texas. Why is he not doing anything? I want to remind you of something. Governor Perry will not come on this show. Senator Jeff Sessions will not come on this show. I'm warning you to beware of these people. I'm telling you that they're all as cynical as Glenn Beck. They're all exploiting this crisis to, uh, to attract your attention to the fact that they're going to defend you, but yet, yet they're refusing to do it while they can. 
The governor has the power to order the Texas National Guard to the border. Governor Jan Brewer, great woman. Why is she not putting the Arizona National Guard on the border to defend the state? Why? She has a National Guard. Didn't many of them fight in Afghanistan? Many of them are battle-hardened veterans. They would know what to do. They could be put on the border. They have weapons. They have uh, tanks. They have heavy machinery. They could defend their states. They don't have to go to Obama for permission. Don't you understand that this could be done? So, you know, you're getting lies all around here. You're getting lies, circular lies, circle after circle of lies. These are called circles of deceit. They're circles of the of deceit which will lead to our defeat. 855-407-282 is the Savage Nation. Let's see what you have to say about it. Sean on WJR, go ahead, please. You're on the Savage Nation. Sean, WJR. Now that, you know, there's one more JR caller like this on the call screen. You should stop ordering pizza during a show. The next time you order a pizza, instead of screening the calls for me, I'd get one with anchovies for me. Now, actually, I don't eat anchovies. Get me one with sausages. Uh, 855-407-282. Kevin, on WMAL, go ahead, please. Hey, sir, how you doing? Um, I got two points. One, the first one is the, we need to stop talking about this being a illegal immigration issue and talk about it being purely a human trafficking issue. And the fact that the federal government now is the largest financer of the biggest human trafficking program in the entire world. That there's ever That's well put. That's right. They're financing the human trafficking. So you want to carry this to its extreme? Where's the U.N.? Make no mistake about it. It's big business wanting cheap labor, but you don't understand something. This is not about laborers. When you have four-year-olds with tuberculosis, they're not coming here to work. What sane nation on earth would bring in hardened gang members and children? Tell me. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. The Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I, Michael Savage, trust to buy my gold and silver from, SwissAmerica.com. Comandante Obama has broken our borders with Mexico and says he didn't do it, Bush did it. He started a new Cold War, he said, I didn't do it, Bush did it. He has uh, set back Iraq uh, to the age before we entered, before anyone lost so much as a toenail. And he said, I didn't do it. Bush did it. And, of course, he's a busy man. I mean, look, there's a lot of fundraising to do. And he's got a plane to catch to Martha's Vineyard shortly for the summer vacation that's coming up. they got to pack. they got to press the clothes. They, uh, Michelle has to supervise the 72 assistants at government expense. And uh, here's a little news story for you. Bergdahl payday. Sergeant could get 350 grand tax-free if cleared by the Army. Last week, he was a traitor. Last week, everyone was in the unit with him, said he ran away over to the enemy. Now Obama has cleaned them up, gave him a bath, and he's back already. He's going to get $350,000 if the Potemkin investigation reveals he did not desert his Afghanistan post. Take a guess who's going to do the investigation. I think Eric Holder's going to do it personally. And they're going to say he was a prisoner of war for five years. He really didn't leave his post. No, no. They should give him a, I think they should give him a Medal of Honor for abandoning his post. After all, isn't that what a peacenik does? New turn in conflict. Israel says it shot down drone launch from Gaza. Yeah, well, they have the Iron Dome, which is very good. The Iron Dome is working very well, and it's adaptable. Otherwise, Israel wouldn't exist. And what's going on in America, in Paris, the Jews were beaten up in synagogues by their peaceful Palestinian uh, brethren. And they broke into a synagogue over there, and uh, the, the socialist, uh, whatever his name is, Hollande, Hollande saw said, hey, this is not good. Hey, we do not know which side to take because we are French. We take it both ways. We turn whatever, whatever. We, excuse me, I must go for a lunch. And he's going to get to the, another one, going to get to the bottom of it. So that's pretty bad. The illegal immigrants pouring in from Central America. Even Central American immigrants in America are opposed to this. Nobody wants it. Nobody wants it except Obama and Holder and um, Cecilia Munoz of La Raza. La Raza wants this. Here's another nice report for the day. Military assessment says Iraqi units infiltrated by ISIS and Iran-backed militiamen. Okay, that's good. Very nice. Very nice. And now ISIS is running the, the Iraqi military. I can wake up tomorrow and read that our military has been infiltrated by ISIS and the Muslim Brotherhood. What, the people would still go on? Oh, Muslim Brotherhood, what's that? What's it, a club? If I said to the average American, the U.S. military has a Muslim Brotherhood 
infiltration, they'd say, oh, that's nice. Uh, we need diversity. We need diversity in America. I'm glad that they... What is it, some kind of club, a boys' club, a boys' choir? Like the Mormon Tabernacle Choir? Is that what the Muslim Brotherhood is? Excuse me, i got to go to the shop and have my nails done. That's what's going on in the country today. I see that the shipwreck, the coast of Concordia, has been refloated thanks to uh, Euro technology. Yeah, remember that ship guy hit the rock, that like Italian captain? The uh, the, the woman-crazed Italian captain. He, he was in the... Uh, He's having a little uh, tete -tete. Where was he? Oh, he had the blonde running the ship when he hit the rocks. He was like cruising the island. He was like racing close to the island to show to his relatives like, Hey, how you doing, mamma mia? Look at the ship I have under my control. Boom, the rocks sink sideways. That was, at least they gave him a trial. Is he probably out already? Is, uh, he'll get a $350,000 payment. If this was an American captain and he ran the ship into the rocks like that, the first thing he would say is he didn't do it on purpose. He had a, an illness. But we have to give him a three hundred million dollar reward because no, not everyone died. That would be the American way. In Italy, they put him away for life. I think that's interesting. Israel charges three suspects in Palestinians' death, teen revenge killing. Israel shoots down drone. Iron Dome is working. That's all. Thank God for technology. We wouldn't be here for one second. Look, there's not going to be any peace in Israel until the Palestinians accept Israel. It's that simple. They can't have it both ways, the Palestinians. And this is something Holder doesn't understand. And Valerie Jarrett, who's really running the country while Obama's golfing. Until the Palestinians accept Israel's right to exist, there'll be no peace at all. It's that simple. We know the shooting started. We know Israel's going to get most of the blame. Already we know the UN degenerates have come back from vacation to attack Israel. We, gotta, we know that. It's all predictable. Here we have a little nation under attack. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. You know, I don't want to live in the past. I'm a perfectly unhappy American. I don't need to live in the past. But the fact is, as I was taught as a young liberal student in college, we should leave the world a better place than the one we inherited or the one we found. Isn't that what the liberals taught you in college? All of the fraudulent liberals who were trying to destroy everything you believed in were telling you the, the they were speaking with a forked tongue. Oh, leave the world a better place than you found it. So I'm trying to leave the world a better place than I found it, and they're trying to make it as worse as they can, as fast as they can. What sane person on earth, tell me, would bring in infected immigrants that no one can pay for? Can anyone listening to this show justify this? Now, you certainly could justify bringing in laborers. I get that. I mean, if you're trying to get lower costs in your, in your labor, let's say you're a greedy contractor who's a pig and wants to pay people below union wages. You pay people minimum wage. You can pick them up on the side of a curb, they give them 8 bucks an hour, and it, the coyote gets 15 maybe. You can pay the coyote 15 They give the poor guy 7 bucks an hour off the book, books, and you get to take home money enough to buy a second pickup truck and take your children on a second vacation. I get it. I mean, the, the basic essence of all of life is, is uh, larceny. Larceny is in the hearts of all men. I mean, no one's a saint. No, larceny is in the hearts of all men. I mean, no one, no one is a saint. I get that. But laws are put in place to prevent this kind of larcenous behavior. I'm not asking your conscience to control you. That's long gone. There's no conscience anymore. You know, they say God is dead. I think it was Nietzsche who wrote God is Dead. Well, Savage wrote The Conscience is Dead. It was killed by Prozac and uh, ESPN. But uh, on a serious note, the fact of the matter is what sane person on earth would bring in, not laborers, but two-year-olds, four-year-olds, four-year-olds, six-year-olds, how are they going to work? But um, I see what's going on. We have a, a rogue president who's out of control, acting like a crazed criminal. I know those are harsh words, but I have no other words for them. I don't know how to create words that are not real. If a man violates the Constitution on a regular basis, if he uh, overrides the Supreme Court and says, they let them do what they want, I don't care, I'll use the pen, whatever. If he says, we're going to bring in the illegals no matter what you do, whatever, then goes off to a golfing game, you have to say to yourself, you have something wrong here. Either he's crazy or something worse. Now, I don't think he's crazy to you. He doesn't look like he's crazy to me. Do you, does he think he's, do you think the president is a nut, or do you think that he knows what he's doing? I think he knows what he's doing. I don't think he could be a nut. 
And what's happening, though, is that the opportunists, like uh, the opportunists are going along with him. All the opportunists who see which way the wind blows, like Glenn Beck, are jumping ship and moving into the amnesty uh, area, claiming they're doing it for the children. I don't know how you can distinguish between Glenn Beck and Amnesty International, or Glenn Beck and all the people he's pretended all these years to despise. How is Glenn Beck's position different than that of La Raza or Lulak? I don't understand that you know what's going on, but he sees which way the wind is blowing, and he's decided which way to go, which is on the side of amnesty. I've been working on the issue of immigrants and epidemics for at least 10 years before I started in radio, which was back in the 80s, I told you that. And now we have a border crisis that is a health threat to the nation. Article came out today in Newsmax magazine about the real health threat. And it was written by a board-certified otolaryngologist. Laryngologist, laryngologist. In other words, a doctor who knows what he's talking about on Newsmax. And he said it's like a perfect pressure cooker. A culture medium, if you really want to think about it. A 1,700-mile track by foot, by train or however else they're being brought in. They haven't been fed, they're dehydrated, their immune systems have basically taken a major hit. And you have to remember that they're young children, so they don't have a lot of reserve to begin with. Frontline health professionals are seeing people with active TB. Listen to me, liberal morons living in New York City who can smile and smirk at Michael Savage. This is to all of you smart Alex, especially on the Upper East Side who think you know everything. But actually, you're the stupidest people in the United States of America because of your smugness. Frontline health professionals are seeing people with active tuberculosis who are coughing up blood, who are short of breath, who are physically in the throes of active TB and they are communicable. Close quote, said the board certified doctor. Listen, idiots on the Upper East Side of Manhattan who think you're better than everybody, who think that the rest of the country is just a bunch of flyover rubes. Listen to me. The day is going to come that you're going to think back on this radio show and say, that guy tried to warn us, but I laughed at him. That guy tried to tell us that we have a rogue president who's destroying the country. That guy tried to tell us that not all immigrants are the same. That guy tried to tell us that no sane nation on earth lets illegal aliens with active TB into their country. That guy tried to tell us that no sane nation on earth has no voter ID. That guy tried to tell us that there was a government not of the people, by the people, and for the people, but a government of the fill-in-the-blank. Because it's not of the people, by the people, and for the people. And as Abe Lincoln said, you can fool some of the people some of the time, and you can fool some of the New Yorkers all of the time, but you can't fool Michael Savage any of the time. That's right. Now, of course, it doesn't affect the Upper East Side of Manhattan, as you know there. The people who go to the White House who sneer at anybody who loves America and the flag. And so they're not going to get TB, as you understand. They're immune to it. They can't get it, after all. They're, they're the good liberals. Why would a tuberculosis bacterium infect a good liberal from the Upper East Side of Manhattan? They're immune. I mean, they only affect right-wing crackers. Tuberculosis can only transmit from an illegal alien child spitting up blood to some cracker somewhere in another state. It can't affect you. You're on the board of the Museum of Modern Art. How can it affect you? You're on the board of all the museums in Manhattan. You ride around in a limousine. How can this affect you? You're above it. You're above not only the law, as we well know, because you have protexia at the highest level. I mean, your husband and you bought that protection a long time ago by buying politicians. And so I'm sure that the TB will also stay away from you. You put a marking on your door, TB, stay away. You put a marking on your door that said swine flu, not here. I'm not a right winger. You put a marking on your door that said... Infectious tuberculosis cannot enter my door because I am a good American liberal. Yeah, that's how you think. That's called insanity. And that's why I wrote a book many years ago called Liberalism is a Mental Disorder. You, my dear, are nuts. You, my dear, on the Upper East Side of Manhattan, are nuts. Your country is melting down in front of your eyes because of this criminal administration. Let me repeat those two words in case you missed it. Criminal administration. They're violating the laws of the land. How many scandals? Well, you wouldn't know. You're on the board of the museum. Liberalism is a mental disorder by the New York Times bestseller, Michael Savage. But since you're uh, not going to be affected by any of this, you can certainly switch the radio channel in New York City from WABC to some drivel. 
So we have a health threat. TB, which was once almost wiped out in America, resurged during the AIDS epidemic. Now it's a menace again. You already forgot Lois Lerner's missing emails. You know, you know that there's it's servers they could get them from. You know that Obama's targeting the middle class, which is why every speech now talks about how he's helping the middle class. See, we, we're on to him. To him, the middle class is not middle class, it's the bourgeoisie. That's his natural enemy. Everything Obama learned from his childhood on, well, I would say after childhood, was uh, against the bourgeoisie, the middle class. So now, since we uncovered that, every other speech is how he's trying to help the middle class. But no, it's not the middle class. He's aimed at the middle class. He's destroying it. We do have not an imperial president, I want to repeat what I taught you last week, but we have a rogue president, a rogue presidency. What do I mean by that? It means it's operating without any checks and balances, without the input of Congress, without he even over, over, he tries to override the Supreme Court. The people don't even exist to him. That's a rogue presidency created just for you in the savage nation. What a long week ahead of me. I even thought I had such a good time Saturday, I thought I'd take off today. But then I woke up and I said, I can't take the day off. The people need me. They hang on every word. Guys need me. They can't live without me. I'm the president of the savage states of America. They can't do without me. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise. The president of the savage states of America. Da, da, da. No, I just came up with that. That was in the event that I was uh, at. Ladies and gentlemen, the president of the savage states of America. Look, I predated the whole Tea Party movement with the C Compassionate Conservative Conventions. And uh, I don't get credit for it, but I enjoyed it. I, I did what I could. I tried my best. So I'm pretty sure I'll get rewarded for it. Yeah, right. Yeah, God's waiting for me. All right, step forward, please. Michael, please step forward. Tell me what you did on Earth. Well, I, I tried my best. I mean, we had a terrible situation down there. The country was pretty messed up when I was born, but, you know, the Nazis were defeated, and America kind of was a great place for a long while. And then uh, along came uh, Timothy Leary with the drugs, Allen Ginsberg with the mumbo-jumbo, and uh, William Kunstler perverting the law. And the next thing we know, the women's movement combined, and the next thing we knew, the country fell apart. Really? And uh, what did you have to do with that, Savage? Please step forward. God can't hear you. He's a little tired. His ears are not working as well as they did millennia ago. See, that, that's the argument. What? The God can't hear me? I thought he's perfect. You want to be a wise guy? You'll go right to the back of the class. I'll make you come back again. Speak up. God can't hear you. His ears are... He's old now. Been around for millennia. He's tired, so say it again. He asked you a simple question through me. What exactly did you do while all this was going on, Savage? I tried my best. I wrote books. And what effect did they have? I must admit, little effect, God. And... Well, I did a radio show every day. Three hours a day. I did it for 20 years. 25. I shouldn't say 20. That means I'm dead. I did the best show I could for over 20 years. And what effect did that have? What effect it had? It got worse. So would you say you're responsible for the communist regime that took over the country in uh, 08? I, in a way, I have to have responsibility because the more I tried, the worse it got. So, you, so you're putting the burden on me. Don't ask questions of God. Don't be a Weisenheimer. You don't come here to ask questions. You come here to answer, Michael. Oh, sorry, I'm just saying. No, no, don't try the Talmudic riddle on God. He wrote it. He invented the, the Talmudic riddle. He asked you a question through me. He doesn't talk. I talk for him. He asked you a question. So you did the shows, you wrote the books, and what happened? We got a communist regime anyway that, that stepped on the Constitution and broke the borders down and brought in diseased individual. And so who did this? Well, I didn't do it. I talked about borders, language, and culture. And and God wants to know what effect did it have. It had the opposite effect. But can you blame it? Oh, you're asking a question again. You can't ask questions of God. God cannot. You can't ask. You can only answer. So he's asking you what effect it had. And that's it. That's the dialogue that's waiting for me. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. Well, today on the Savage Nation, we've been talking about, I'm sorry to tell you, immigration, immigration, immigration. But it's not about immigration. It's about epidemics. And I've told you, I'm the expert on this. I own this subject. I've been trying to warn America for over 30 years. 10 years before I was in radio, about the dangers that occur when you bring in unchecked immigrants from third world nations without any medical screening. Well, now we see it. The border guards themselves are coming down with tuberculosis. 
You think I'm making it up. You think it's right-wing hysteria. You know, somewhat, do so at your own risk. Washington Free Beacon, outbreak on the border. Federal health authorities contain pneumonia, swine flu outbreaks among illegal children in California. Why don't you send them to the homes of the senators who think that they're all divine? Health authorities and Navy bases on the California took steps last week in the curtail an outbreak of pneumonia and swine flu among illegal immigrant children brought in by Obama, housed at the facility. Did you hear this? Obama is infecting the United States of America. The pneumonia cases and meningitis scare last weekend followed two cases of H1N1 swine flu among other child immigrants. Obama is infecting the nation. No sane nation on earth would permit a madman to stay in office who was infecting a nation. Do you understand that when you bring in people who are ill, you're going to get ill? Do you understand this could cause a massive, I'll stop right here. Do you understand we now have drug-resistant tuberculosis coming in? They're not being screened. They're not being screened. Our own Defense Department is, is being used to bring them in to defend them against those of us who don't want them here. Okay, but that's only part of the problem. Who's going to take care of these 300,000 or 30 million or 60 million that the left wants to flood America with? Maybe Glenn Beck ought to give up his fortune that he made as a, a wonderful spokesman for uh, his self-interest as he goes down there to give them food. I, I can't imagine being a parent sending my child across Mexico on their own with a with a uh, you know a, a drug lord, but that's what people are doing. Uh, now they're here. So what do we do? Well, while Washington is arguing, we I think we have a personal responsibility for mercy and um, and 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 to be there to help them, to be the good Samaritan, to be the Americans that we always are. Glenn Beck is an example of the problem. Problem. Glenn Beck is the problem. Glenn Beck is not the solution. Glenn Beck is now on the side of Barack Hussein Obama and the Mexican cartels bringing in these children, in my opinion. Why do I say that? Well, we all have compassion for these poor children. Maybe you have, maybe you don't. What does it matter whether you do or you not, don't? We see children stacked in government warehouses, but how many of them are really children? All of them? Some of them? How many are 15 to 17 year old gang members coming in to do us harm? Ask Glenn Beck. Maybe Glenn Beck with his Blarney can stop the Blarney for one minute. In my opinion, Glenn Beck is a front man for the Mormon church. That's how his books have sold so well. It's certainly not based on his education or intelligence. It's based upon the fact that he has millions of attendant co-religionists in the Mormon church, as well known, who buy his books and watch his shows. And as you well know, the Mormon church, the Catholic church, many other churches are benefiting in the multi-millions, if not billions, from the immigration problem. You don't know that. Check it out. So those are some of the problems. Massachusetts sheriff says we're all becoming border states. Listen to clip eight. We're all becoming border states now. And we want to know what are the trends, what's happening, what can we expect. Uh, we know there's going to be more coming here from Texas. We've already had in our facility already uh, two uh, groups coming off the planes there. But here's the worst clip of all. Here's Obama saying he'll use executive action to bypass Congress on the immigration crisis. This is his mouthpiece. Uh, I think that there are some aspects of that that we are able to do with our executive authority alone. That is why, for example, the president has acted using his executive authority to deploy additional resources um, that are part of the immigration court system. That would allow us to uh, process that backlog more quickly and would meet all of those goals. Uh, what we are seeking are a couple of things, resources that would allow us to uh, increase the number of personnel that are devoted to that effort. You're living in a dictatorship, only you don't know it. Because instead of screaming in German, instead of screaming in German, he's conning in English. This is Michael Savage. God bless America. Savage.